Hey, this is Philip from Seafs and Motor Co. And today we're going to talk all about the cooling system of the Classic Mini. So beyond not overheating, there's a lot of other benefits to uh, making sure that your car is running cool. Uh, in David Vizard's Yellow Bible, he actually talks about the optimum power level that you get with different coolant temperatures. And he found that 70 degrees Celsius coolant temperature is actually maximum power. Uh, there's some side effects with this though, is if you're uh, running too cool, your engine oil doesn't get up to temperature, which can have other problems. Uh, so for a street car running around 85 degrees Celsius is usually what we aim for. Uh, that will give you a really good power level and also efficiency and you don't have to change your oil every thousand miles or anything like that. Uh, so there's a lot of different benefits uh, to cooling uh, beyond the kind of, oh, it doesn't overheat. Uh, and to start off this conversation, let's talk about the coolant itself. So when it comes to coolant in a classic mini, there's many different uh, styles and, uh, and brands. Uh, but the main important thing is to make sure that your coolant is clean uh, and it is not contaminated with rust. Classic Minis have cast iron blocks and cast iron cylinder heads. Uh, and what that means is if uh, there is just a lot of water in there uh, and it doesn't have the anti-corrosive properties that coolant has, uh, you can get rust buildup. And the rust buildup uh, will do many things. One is that rust is a, uh, a heat soaking element, so it'll actually uh, prevent the engine from getting cool, from allowing that heat to be shed uh, into the coolant. Uh, the other thing is that when the rust kind of uh, comes off of the engine, uh, the cylinder head or the block, it will contaminate the little ports, uh, both in the radiator uh, and throughout the engine, um, restricting flow and then making your coolant worse. So the main thing when you are checking the coolant, make sure it looks clean. Uh, make sure that you have uh, a good mix of coolant to water based on the time of year. Uh, you want to have just enough coolant uh, in there uh, to stop the uh, corrosive properties of the water. Uh, and then flushing it every year is always good practice. To demonstrate this, here's an example of a car we were working on the other day that was overheating. This is what coolant shouldn't look like. Uh, get that old coolant out of there and put some fresh stuff in. The next consideration is flow. We need coolant to flow through the engine, through the radiator, uh, to take the heat from the engine, uh, put it into the water or coolant, and then go through the radiator to be cooled off. Uh, without flow, you have no coolant. So with the Mini, there's some specific things that uh, are kind of unique to the car. Uh, one is that the radiator is facing sideways, as opposed to a normal car where it's in the front of the car and the, the air is allowed to pass right over it. Uh, because of this, uh, we need to make sure that the, uh, the belt that holds both the water pump and the coolant fan is uh, a good tension. Without that, you're not gonna have the water pump turning, which will not flow the, uh, the, uh, the coolant through the system, and you'll also not have the fan. And we need the mechanical fan uh, to be blowing air through the radiator at all times. Uh, unlike a conventional car, once you get up onto the highway or something, the airflow going over the radiator just from the wind passing over it is enough to cool it. With a Mini, because it's tucked in the wheel well and facing sideways, we need that mechanical fan going all the time to pull the heat out uh, of the radiator. Now, with a water pump on a Classic Mini, there's actually some upgrades you can make. The factory water pumps had a small impeller uh, that was made of uh, metal, cast iron, and that cast iron uh, impeller, uh, much like the cast iron that the engine is made out of, uh, can uh, corrode. And not only does that uh, increase the amount of actual corrosion in the coolant, uh, but it can actually wear away on the, uh, on the impeller uh, fins, making the water pump less efficient. Now they sell an upgraded uh, water pump that has a larger impeller that's also made of uh, sort of like a plastic and that will obviously not corrode so you'll get better flow, less corrosion and that's always a good upgrade. If you are changing your water pump look for the upgraded version. Flow uh, is also dependent on your thermostat. Thermostat is a really simple device. It goes in uh, the water neck on top of the cylinder head 
uh, and it opens and closes to allow the engine to get up to temperature uh, to regulate the amount of coolant that is going through the radiator. Now, from about 78 on, most minis have an 88 degree Celsius thermostat. That means that the thermostat opens up and coolant is allowed to go through the engine around 88 degrees. Um, that's an important number because that will kind of tell you the operating temperature of your engine. If you are in a hotter climate or uh, somewhere where you need more cooling, you might consider getting a lower opening temperature thermostat. Uh, and then vice versa if you're uh, somewhere that's cooler. Uh, these can get clogged up and they can uh, get um, seized closed. And if they do that, you're not gonna have any flow through your radiator uh, and that will obviously cause you to overheat. So they're really cheap, uh, easy to, to change out. Uh, it's a good maintenance thing to do um, is to change out the, uh, the thermostat here. Now, some people might consider just tossing the thermostat and doing away with it all together so they have constant flow. And on most conventional cars, that's always an option. Uh, however, with the Mini, the way that the cylinder head is designed, if you do that, there will not be enough flow uh, to cylinder number four, the, the one on the farthest away from the radiator. Um, and that will cause that cylinder to get extra hot and overheat. Um, the thermostat, the way that it goes in, um, regulates the, the direction that the coolant flows. So if you do want to get rid of your thermostat, let's say you have a race car or something, you don't want the risk of something uh, like a thermostat getting clogged up, uh, there is something called a blanking sleeve and that goes in place of the thermostat, um, but it still allows the coolant to flow in the correct direction, which will not give you uh, an overheating uh, of uh, cylinder number four. Last thing to consider with coolant flow is blockages. Uh, we talked about it earlier about uh, the corrosion from the engine uh, getting into the radiator and causing blockages. Uh, you can also get blockages if you had a leak and someone put in a stop leak. Uh, the stop leak will work uh, in some cases where it will stop the leak, but if you're thinking about it, it's also going to clog all the passages that are small enough uh, for, um, for a leak to happen. So uh, this means the thin little tubes in the radiator can get clogged up, and although you may stop the leak, uh, you're gonna be adding a new problem into it where you're gonna have reduced flow through your radiator. So it's always best, uh, if you have a leak, just replace the part uh, that has got the leak in it. Another really important component of cooling a uh, classic Mini or any car is heat transfer. The classic radiator style is something like this. Um, this is facing um, sideways in the car, uh, as I explained earlier, so it's extra, extra critical that the radiator uh, is in good condition uh, for a Classic Mini. Now, there's many different styles of radiators that come with the Classic Mini. Uh, there is this kind of factory style. This one is actually a thicker core than usual. Uh, there's a couple different core thicknesses that you can get uh, with the steel style radiators. Uh, and obviously, the bigger the core, uh, the more cooling fins it has, the more passageways, the more it's gonna cool. Um, it's also, uh, depending on the thickness of the radiator, uh, can be more difficult to fit. Uh, so make sure to uh, get the radiator that uh, best suits your application. Now, there are also some upgrades uh, from the kind of conventional steel radiator. You can also get an aluminum radiator. Now, aluminum radiator has a couple benefits. Not only uh, is it lighter, uh, it's also usually they have a thicker core on it. Um, to, uh, to kind of allow more coolant flow, uh, but also aluminum uh, is a better heat sink. It, um, it allows the, uh, the temperature from the coolant to get dispersed into the air more efficiently. Uh, and there are also some upgrades on the aluminum radiator. You can get this kind of conventional aluminum radiator, a radiator uh, or you can get a really big one. Now this is uh, kind of the monster rad. Uh, you can see the core thickness of that right there uh, in comparison to this one here. Uh, and this is pretty much for a race car. So if you are going to be running on the street, uh, we do say that um, the, the minis didn't overheat from the factory. They shouldn't be overheating now. Uh, a factory radiator, if you're using it in a street application, should be plenty good as long as it has good coolant flow. It's not uh, clogged up. Uh, if you do want to upgrade 
to an aluminum radiator, it doesn't hurt. Uh, it can make a really good improvement in your cooling, but it shouldn't be used as a Band-Aid fix. So if your car is overheating and you're just having to make your radiator bigger and bigger in order to compensate for that, uh, you should look elsewhere because you probably have another problem in your system. Another piece of the puzzle when it comes to heat transfer is actually pressure. Now, uh, we know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. We can increase that temperature uh, with pressure. So when you have uh, a radiator, there it will be a, a radiator cap, looks like this, uh, and it has a spring on it. And the reason it has a spring on it is because uh, it has to hold a certain amount of pressure uh, as it's built up uh, before it's allowed to open and for the pressure to escape. Uh, the reason we have pressure is because the more pressure you're able to contain uh, within the system, the higher the boiling point will be. Uh, so with a uh, blown radiator cap, where the radiator cap, uh, the spring is gone or the seal is gone, you're not going to be able to hold uh, as much pressure and therefore the boiling point uh, will go down and you will overheat uh, more um, easily. So with a really simple maintenance, uh, I always recommend changing out the rad cap uh, first, it's a really easy thing to do, cheap, uh, and you just want to make sure that that's in good condition because if you don't have a seal there, uh, you might be chasing a problem that is simple as something as one of these. So in order to get air to pass over the radiator to cool it down, we need to use a fan. A fan looks like something like this. This is a classic mini fan. This came on most of the cars. Uh, and it has a design flaw. This fan can be installed backwards. Uh, and there's a lot of cars that come through the shop that have the fan installed backwards and although it works, uh, it's way less efficient. So you want to make sure that the fan is installed the correct way. And that way is with the smooth side here facing the engine. So you have the engine, you have the fan, and you have the radiator right here. And the air passes over this way, not this way. You don't want the air passing over the rough side. It goes over the smooth side. With that in place, uh, the, the fan blows a lot of air. If you have your car running and you put your hand down by the fender, you'll feel the amount of air that's coming out of there. This is a really powerful fan. It's essentially, because it's driven off the engine, you have a, let's say, 50, 60 horsepower fan. When it compares to a little electric fan like this, it's only a 12 volt, 80 watt fan. Uh, this doesn't have anywhere near the amount of power that the factory fan does and we really need to have this fan turning all the time with the sideways facing radiator in order to keep the mini cool. So make sure that your fan is installed the correct way, making sure uh, that it has got a good belt tension so it's not spinning. And if you do want to use uh, an additional fan, something like this, uh, this can be mounted inside the radiators. Even the later cars, the SPIs, they had a factory installed electric fan on the outside. It helps just evacuate some more of that, uh, that hot air. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're using the uh, factory mechanical fan to get the optimum cooling. Now if you live in a really hot climate, you might have to do some extra modifications in order to make sure that your Mini stays cool. They did have an item called the Tropical Fan uh, that they released for the hot climates and it's a steel fan uh, with some really aggressive blade profiles that blows a lot of air. Uh, it isn't as efficient or as quiet as the plastic fan, uh, but it does move more air. Uh, and as we talked about earlier, there are options like lower temperature thermostats, uh, blanking sleeves, bigger radiators, all those things. But an important point that I want to make is that if you are having to do those solutions uh, and you're not in a super hot climate or you don't have um, a special case scenario, look to make sure that all of the components in your cooling system are working correctly. The minis should not overheat uh, with um, kind of factory parts uh, in kind of normal situations. So if you are overheating, uh, don't blame it on a faulty design or don't blame it on, uh, on not having enough aftermarket parts. Uh, make sure that the system is working correctly. Uh, a Mini can run nice and cool all day long uh, with correct maintenance and good parts. For some race cars, for extreme circumstances, uh, they may also do some things kind of like adding an extra radiator, having two radiators, uh, or even having something called a dry deck. And we talked about it earlier where the cylinder uh, number four, the furthest one from the radiator, can get a hot spot in it uh, because coolant flow doesn't get um, enough 
to, to that cylinder. Uh, so what you can actually do is you can actually drill into the cylinder head, drill into the water jacket of the block, and have a bypass tube that goes between the two, and this allows a lot of coolant to flow out of there. Uh, but again, that only is really necessary on the kind of top, top level, high, high performance engines that are running at max RPM all day long and hot temperatures. Uh, if you have a street car, none of that should be necessary. You should be able to get optimum cooling with all factory parts. So hopefully that helps you out with all of your cooling needs of your classic mini. Uh, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe the channel, it really helps us out. Uh, check out stevesonmotorco.com for all of your classic mini parts needs and we've also got a lot of cool uh, swag and shirts and, and whatnot, so check that out. Uh, and thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next video.